We all, at some point, will encounter circular references in Excel. You build your data table, format it like the UX designers we all are, and create your computations. But as you press enter, this pop-up appears. Unwittingly, we will all create circular references in our careers. In this video, we're gonna learn the different tools Excel provides us to find, understand, and resolve them. Circular references aren't exclusive to Excel. In fact, they're more common amongst coders or computer programmers, especially when working with software that doesn't tell them that they committed a circular reference outright. Simply put, circular references are when a function or formula directly or indirectly refers to itself. In some cases, when you run the command or formula, these would go in an infinite loop, sometimes causing instability issues, or in Excel, an erroneous value to be shown. We're gonna demonstrate first using a very simple example of a direct circular reference. Suppose we have three cells that we want to base our computation from. We then type in cell A3 our formula to add all of them. But for some weird reason, you want to select them one by one. So we type in equals, then select each cell one by one, adding our operator between them. But for the third one, we make the mistake like all humans do, and select cell A3 instead. When we press enter, we get a warning pop-up saying that there's a circular reference in our sheet. We can also see clearly that 1 plus 2 plus 3 isn't 0, so that's another red flag. This is called a direct circular reference. Our formula directly references the cell that's in it. Another way of creating circular references is when a different cell that you referenced refers to the base cell that you're creating your formula on. So in this example, we want to add these three cells. These three cells contain the numbers 1, 2, and 0. When we go and create our function, we get a 0. Why is that? It's because the value of cell C1 is actually referring to cell A3. So we indirectly referenced back to the base cell, creating a circular reference. As you probably saw in the previous example, a line appeared showing the circular reference. That's because Excel has got tons of tools to help us spot circular references. Outright, Excel contains loads of tools to help you spot these circular references. The first one was the pop-up message we saw a while ago. This message only appears on the first instance that you committed a circular reference in the spreadsheet. Useful, but fleeting. Next, we can take a look at our status bar. It's this bar at the bottom of our spreadsheets that, well, tells you the status of your spreadsheet, as well as give you the sum and count whenever you highlight cells with values. Whenever you have an instance of a circular reference, you'll see in the status bar that it tells you the location of the circular reference. This is a neat tool that could tell you outright if you have a circular reference. The obvious drawback of this is that it only shows one error at a time. So if you've got multiple, this one isn't exactly the most useful thing in the world, but it's nice to know it's there. Next, we're gonna go back to the blue lines we saw earlier. These are called tracer arrows. If we hop on over to the formulas tab, we can see here that we can add either a trace precedent or trace dependent arrow. When we spot a circular reference in our sheet, we can use these to trace the cells that either make up or are dependent on that cell. Going back to our example a while ago, we can see through the tracer arrows that cell A3 is preceded by cell C1. At the same time, cell C1 is a dependent of cell A3. 
This is a really neat way to visually spot a circular reference. There's another neat tool in the same tab that can greatly help you identify your circular references. If you open the error checking dropdown, you can see at the bottom that it says circular references. And if you click on that, you will get all the cells that are involved in an instance of circular references. We see in this example that it shows our problem cells, cells A3 and C1. If our sheet contains no circular references, or we've resolved them already, the circular references option is grayed out. Just like shielding yourself from a disease, circular references are more of prevention rather than cure. Make sure that you take care when creating complex formulas inside large tables. A common way of committing an indirect circular reference is using your mouse cursor to click and select references for your formulas. As long as you add some due diligence to your workflow, you can skip the finding and removing parts entirely. Meanwhile, some people purposely create circular references. Why? Because newer versions of Excel allow you to create iterative calculations. We'll be talking more about this in a future video, so make sure you're subscribed. Let us know if you've got any experiences with circular references in the comment section down below. As always, leave a like on this video if you found this video useful, and make sure you're subscribed to Simple Sheets for more Excel content. I'll see you guys on the next one.